It is 10.31 and the meeting will return to order. All right, now we're moving into constitutional amendments. The order in which you see them listed here is not the order that they appear in your printed agenda. The business meeting staff have arranged them in an order that we believe is more logical. This is the first of two pages of agenda items of new constitutional amendments. Um, we will proceed through these setting debate time limits and when we get to the next page, I do believe there's going to be in a, uh, some procedural issues involved with them. Uh, but this is the order we want to take them up in. The first item is called the 5% solution. Uh, yes, Mr. Yellow. Good job. Mr. Chairman, I propose that we deal with the items in the order listed in the agenda. And should the meeting then choose to modify it? Mr. Yellow, would, uh, would you please pay attention to the, the orientation video? Turn your back to the, to the meeting and talk into the microphone so they can hear you. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, I propose that we deal with the items of new business in the order as listed in the agenda. The meeting would, of course, always have the right to postpone consideration of those until later but I see no reason to Is there a the second staff. to the member's motion to uh, list to uh, take up the items in the order printed in the agenda? I'll second. Thank you. The motion, no, Mr. Yellow, now you can debate your, your this will take a majority vote. Uh, let me see, this needs debate time. Uh, the chair proposes eight minutes of debate time. Two. I think you'll be better off if you let me force minutes for each side, folks. Thank you. Four minutes. Mr. Gallo. I realize that there are some contentious items which you are attempting to postpone until later. I believe that should not be the decision of the chairman or the podium staff. I believe that should be the decision of the assembly. For what purpose does the member rise? Yes. Were you trying to gain recognition of the chair? Yeah, uh, could you, normally, uh, yeah, you cannot interrupt another speaker, and that's why, okay, okay, yes, all right. Is this a speech against the motion? Yes. Yeah, okay, come, come on up. I'd like to remind people, if you are standing in the back of the room, there are still seats, and I would really prefer that people take a seat and rise for recognition. If we were, had to use the overflow space, we'd have to do something different, but we don't, so we're not going to. Thank you. Was the... Uh, speak into the, don't, yeah, yeah, speak yeah, yeah, into yeah, the yeah. microphone, turn your back to us. State your name, yes. Thank you. My name is Bill Taylor. Uh, question for the chair. Was the agenda published in advance? Was, it, was the agenda approved at the beginning of this meeting? We don't typically do that. That's what this meeting is about, is setting up the agenda. Are you speaking against the motion to I, rearrange it? In that case, yeah. if, the, if the agenda had not been approved in advance, then it, arranging it now would be appropriate. Uh, speech in favor of reverting to the printed order. Okay. Speech against reverting to the printed order. Yes? And when you come to the microphone, you might want to adjust the mic to yourself. If you are tall enough, you might have to pick up the microphone. Turn your back to us, speak to the audience, and, speak, and say your name for the benefit of the recording. My name's Kate Secor. Um, oh, microphone. Right Sorry, better? Hi, my name is Kate Secor. Um, we're going to get through almost all of this anyway. The stuff that's been pushed to the end of the agenda is probably the stuff that many people want to speak to, so we're not going to skip it by doing it later. I think doing it in the proposed order means that we actually get to all of the other stuff as well as the stuff that has been pushed off to the end. Speech in favor of reverting to the printed agenda. A speech against. Mr. Illingworth, those people who have sound-making devices need to silence them and take them out of the room. Thank you. Um, Tim Illingworth, I was just going to say that I, the order is random in either event, whether it's uh, the printed order or a different order, and I trust the head table to do it right. Just a moment. I will say that the order of the agenda is merely the order that they were submitted in. 
There was no attempt to move things around at the time that I was posting them on the web. As they came in, that's the way they went. Yes. But the order that we've changed it to is, we think, is a more logical order. That's right. We just, they're just come, they're first in, first out for the printed order. Uh, let me see. We are on a in favor of reverting to the printed order. Uh, yes. If you, uh, you need to come to the microphone. It's an inquiry. Presumably, an inquiry. That's okay. You can make an inquiry. Hello, my name is Ari Goldstein. I just had a quick question as, as to whether or not the head table could expand a bit on how they got to the, log the order they wanted to change it to. The head table does not feel the need to engage in debate on the motion. Okay. <laughs> uh, let's see, are we are in favor of reverting to the printed order. Uh, you, sir, yes. I keep forgetting people's names and I apologize. For those of us who are trying to follow this thing, it makes it easy. Speak your name. Say your name. I'm sorry. Howard Rosenblatt. Uh, for those of us who are trying to follow these things, it makes it much easier if we're having an order and the, as they are put into the book. Um, I appreciate the fact that it may have been randomly submitted initially, but from a practical standpoint, for those of us who are trying to follow, it will avoid us from having to go back and forth and back and forth and allow us to keep our books in order. So I would prefer to go to the printed agenda. The chair would clarify it's not just that we're, we would go through the uh, agenda, not just in the, uh, for setting debate time limits, but in their actual consideration if we revert to the printed order. That would be both, uh, bo in both cases, yes. Uh, all right. Um, how much time do we have against? Uh, for going back to the printed order, we have about a minute left. One minute to, to go back to the printed order. And for keeping the order that's on the screen, we have... Um, about a minute 15. Minute. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Uh, those in favor of retaining the, ex the printed order, uh, is there uh, anyone speaking in, no, I mean, in, 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 no, in re and re I'm sorry, in, in leaving it the way it is up on the screen, sorry. Uh, a question. Okay, we'll take that. I'm being very nice about when start my time. Yes, as soon as they start talking. Yeah. Right. yeah, the time you're spending walking back and forth to the microphone doesn't count against your debate time. Unless you walk <laughs> Unless you piss us off. <laughs> yeah, uh, before you speak, I do apologize. I'm not likely to see over there. You may, you may need to be a bit more demonstrative, and I apologize for that. It's hard. It, 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 we are not, I'm not far enough back to see the wings as much. Thank you. Speak. Go ahead. Yes. My name is Thomas Monahan, and my question is, would this revised schedule push E. Probus Hugo into tomorrow's meeting instead of today? If it, uh, it is possible, the question, yes, E Pluribus Hugo might be considered, to, might be considered tomorrow depending on if we get through, the, depending on how fast we go through the items tomorrow. We set a debate time limit today, but the actual consideration, I believe Mr. Yallo's intent is for us to consider it tomorrow if we get to that point in the agenda. Is that correct, Mr. Yallo? That is the legislative intent of the motion, is to have, the, to have E Pluribus Hugo and 4 and 6 considered at tomorrow's meeting, should we reach that point, should we have enough time to do so. Okay, that was an inquiry. Yes, uh, yes, Ms. Cortai. Dara Cortai, speak again favor of the microphone. Yeah. I'm on. Is, is this the wrong microphone? The I hear one. me. Okay, even closer. Dara Cordati speaking in favor of the screen order because I was at the how to do business meeting panel yesterday and I know that we can go as long as we need to on Sunday as opposed to having to cut out at 1245. By putting them last on the agenda, we know that we can actually get through it. Okay, uh, speech in favor of going back to the printed order. Yes? Uh, An inquiry? Can bring, him the, bring him the mic. Uh, he, he, he has the, the, we have a hearing issue. Uh, Kilowatt, I'm the lead sponsor for the EPH that was up there. And 
I have a plane, I will have to leave here by one o'clock on Sunday. So in order for us to debate that as long as we get it done by the 1245 meeting, then that's fine. Other than that, I have no opinion on whether we would do it on which day. But just as, a, oh. as information for them, uh, in order for me to present, I have to leave by one o'clock on Sunday. Thank you. Yeah, I, uh, you've used up some debate time one way or the other th that way. Uh, uh, I think you're gonna have to chart. Uh, yes. Can you tell us which direction you're debating when you introduce yourself? Yes. Warren Buff debating in favor of the printed order. I believe that we don't have a strong reason to deviate from our tradition of going in the order of submission without having actually discussed it as a parliamentary body. If we choose as a body to change that order, that's fine, but I, I'd like to start with our traditional order. A uh, speech, let me see, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's a, uh, to refer retaining the order on the screen. Yeah, Perry Ann Lurie, uh, I'm sorry, I'm speak. I wanted to see how they put my name up. Sort of, <laughs> not, not good at all, but that's okay. Um, the, the reason that we would like to put those items at the end of the agenda and discuss them on Sunday is that we will then have data from this year's Hugo nominations, which we currently do not have, and it is hard to debate this in a vacuum. Any time left to speak it? Uh, they, uh, printed order has nine seconds, screen order has six seconds. The chair believes the debate time has expired. <laughs> uh, there is no debate time left. If you want to move to extend debate, you can. The chair doesn't believe you have a two-thirds ability to do so. <laughs> <laughs> On the motion to revert, is there, it, sorry, no, okay, thank you. On the, motion, on the motion to revert to the printed order, all of those in favor of, refer, of reverting the agenda to the order in which it is printed in the paper documents, raise your hands. Hands down. Those in favor of sticking to the order on the screen and the slides, hands down. The negative has it, the motion fails. Now we go on. Now that settles what I thought was going to happen on the next page. <laughs> that takes us to setting debate time limits. Item B12 is called the 5% solution. This would repeal the existing requirement that any uh, Hugo finalist uh, must get at least 5% of the votes of the nominations cast in a category to place in the bottom two positions, four, four and five. You have to have a minimum of three anyway. The chair suggests six minutes. Any other numbers? Eight. Eight? You can call it numbers. Twelve? Okay. Twelve, eight, six, four. four. Any others? Okay, we'll start with 12. All those in favor of 12 minutes, raise your hands, hands down. Uh, those opposed, hands down. Eight minutes, those in favor of eight minutes, raise your hands. Hands down, those opposed, hands down, that doesn't pass. Six minutes, all those in favor of six minutes, hands down, those opposed. Six minutes is adopted. Item B15 is called multiple nominations. It proposes to deal with the situation when a work that is potentially eligible in multiple categories, not necessarily on the, their length, but based on their content, uh, how to deal with such things. Uh, is a question? You want to move to postpone indefinitely, maybe? Is that it? Yeah. I would like to give us the page number. 22. 22. There's a, there's a table of contents at the front that will give you the page numbers. Item B15, yes, look at your, yes. 20, item 22, page 22, or page 22 rather, B15 is moved to amend the WISFIS Constitution to eliminate the possibility of a work simultaneously appearing on the final ballot in multiple categories. All right. Uh, members do need to rise to be recognized unless they are unable to do so. Uh, yes, please come to the microphone to state your state what you want to, before we uh, we're going to do debate time limit unless you're trying to move it some of the adhering motions. Okay, go ahead and come to the microphone, state your name and your question, and speak to the audience. 
Hi, my name's Gloria McGid. My question is, um, can, I, can we get an example of something that's eligible in more than one category? Because I don't uh, know the how chair, that happens. The chair regrets to inform you that that actually is debate on the substance of the motion. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Very well. Uh, believe it or not, it is. <laughs> All right, the chair proposes eight minutes of debate time. In six, four, There's a ten. ten. Okay, those in favor of, the first was 10, no, I heard 10. All those in favor of 10 minutes, raise your hands. Hands down, those opposed. Hands down, eight minutes, all in favor. Hands down, those opposed. Think the negative has that. Six minutes, those in favor. Hands down, those opposed. Hands down, six minutes has it. Item B16, which is on page 24, or 23? 23. 23. Oh, yes, sorry. Uh, yes, sorry. That is moved to amend the WSFIS Constitution for the purpose of encouraging the diversity of Hugo Award nominations by excluding more than two works within a category that are part of the same dramatic series or have a common co author. Right. That's a diversity called nominee diversity on uh, item B16, page 23. The chair proposes 10 minutes. Okay, hang on a second. Uh, 10. Did I hear a 16? Okay, so 16. Hang on, let's slow down here. Get the, the, the deputy's catching these for me. 16, 12, 10, 8, and 6. Okay, let's, try with, let's see. 16 minutes, those in favor, hands up. Down. Those opposed, thank you. What's next, 12? All in favor, 12 minutes, raise your hands. Hands down, those opposed, hands down. Ten minutes. All, all in favor? Hands down. Those opposed? That's adopted. Ten minutes. Item B17 is page 24. Thank you. This is moved to amend the WSFIS Constitution to make the eligibility time window for any of the specific work categories uh, to be two years rather than one year and to eliminate the current automatic extension of eligibility of works originally published outside the USA. Yes, for what purpose does the member rise? Uh, yes, it's Kate Secor, right? Uh, Ms. Secor has moved to postpone the motion indefinitely. Is there a second? Second. second? second. This motion is debatable. Ms. Secor is the maker of the motion. You have up to two minutes to explain why, you, why we should not consider this motion. Hello, my name is Kate Secor. Um, I think that we should not be considering this uh, this year. I think that extending eligibility for works is harmful to the works that are published in the year. We have so much stuff coming out every year. Giving people two years of eligibility just means that in the second year, there's twice as much stuff. And in the third year, there's twice as much stuff. This is the award for the best of this year. Changing it to the best of this year and last year means that the field is bigger and worthy nominees are in fact less likely to rise to the top of the crop. A speech, op um, that's a speech opposed to the consideration of the motion, a speech in favor of the consideration of the motion. Yes, sir, yes, come to the mic, speak, give your name, and speak to the audience. My name is Jack Foy. Uh, I'm speaking in favor of uh, considering this motion. Uh, uh, closer? All right, better? Okay. Um, I believe that uh, uh, the breadth of the field actually does encourage uh, uh, us discovering works over time and that a year, honestly, especially with stuff uh, uh, published towards the end of the year, uh, is a fairly short window for us to find the stuff that we actually think is good. Speech opposed to the, con uh, yes, a speech opposed to the consideration of the motion? Yes? No, in, no, in the back. Green, in, yeah, green yeah, you, in the green, yes, thank you. You can take the microphone out of its stand and uh, hold it up to your hold it up and speak to the audience and give your name. Uh, Morris Keeson. Um, close. Hold the microphone close to your mouth. K e e s a n. Uh, regardless of the merits of this particular motion, I think we've got enough proposed changes to the Hugos at this moment to 